Do you know what? I keep uh, falling asleep in the Ubers over here. You do? So, like, and typically around when I get to, like, the, the light where we're uh-huh. turning on the view. You're going to get promising young woman. Yeah, pretty much. I almost said the street where you live on. But um, I keep, <laughs> like, the past five times I come over here, I have this thing where, like, I, like, jolt awake, disoriented. And, uh-huh. and, like, <laughs> and just, like, look around for, I guess, my mom. I don't know. <laughs> but it's always just a different, like, Mexican chauffeur. Mm-hmm. Who's, who's just like, sir, are you okay? Like, <laughs> I have to stop you because I and then I was. I would love every time I have a nightmare if there was just a Mexican there to be like, sir, you were you were dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's basically what it is. is <laughs> Give me some hot milk. And, yeah, and then I get embarrassed because I just like I feel like I just like babied out for like the whole. I like I dude. I have to gotta stop uh-huh. being in cars. Puts me to sleep. It's really a problem when like uh you know me and my girlfriend like go on our little cross country trips mm-hmm. because I'll just start like nodding off like on. On the freeway going 70. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is no good, I must say. Yeah, it's absolutely really bad. that's no good. <laughs> it's, it's 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 very bad. It was a problem. I remember like it was a problem like when I whenever I was little, like the minute I was in a car, I would just start falling asleep and my parents were like that's going to be a huge problem when you like if you're a person who like the car puts you to sleep, that's mm-hmm. going to be and they were absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, our son's a bitch, <laughs> dude. Total bitch. The you, car makes him too sleepy. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a big crib. It's mm-hmm. a big rocking crib. I feel yeah. swaddled. I feel safe. The only two accidents I've ever been in in my life is because I was lulled to sleep by the <laughs> by the comforting nature of the combustion engine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, that's happened to me before. I can I can feel you on that. What, yeah. falling asleep from yeah, the motion yeah. of the car. Yeah. Oh, we should say real quick up top that uh, this is our first. Uh, public episode that will also be on YouTube. So if you're listening and you feel like watching it as well, Mm -hmm. go ahead and uh, go to the Coward Hour YouTube channel. You can see my sleepy face. Yeah, you can see Nick's sleepy upset fit are you are you upset you look kind of upset Am I, no i'm i'm awake oh good so yeah you're right <laughs> <laughs> you of, of anyone i know you you're the one with like the most reasonable sleep schedule uh not really i mean i i i guess you just go to bed early but you also wake up insanely early right? yeah i go to bed around like 10 11 but then i wake up at like 4 or 5 mm-hmm. so i'm getting yeah you know then the nightmares set in and you got to yeah <laughs> <laughs> do I look upset? I don't know what I don't. I have no idea what my face is doing at any point. <laughs> All the time I watch it, like I was watching the footage back from the first uh, bonus up that we did, and I was like, "What?" I was like, "I can't even make out." Like, I'm like, "I was there," and I don't know what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> you do have like intense eyes. Yeah, I have intense. They're eyes. expressive, but it's only negative emotions that they express. Well, it's. I mean, here's what it is. I'll tell you exactly what I observed watching myself. Is mm-hmm. like I can express emotions, but I I'm done with them before like a normal amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> so like, it happens. It happens when I laugh. Like I'll be laughing. I'll be enjoying myself. And, uh-huh. my, and my brain is like done laughing. And like, <laughs> I have like male resting bitch face. Yeah, completely. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm you're like, done. all right, I've laughed enough that other people will think that I'm a human. So that's right. That's about done. Moving on. You, you have Zuckerberg cover. face. I do. Uh, yeah, you know what? That's true. <laughs> I'm a little. You know, I don't have his uh, his pallid complexion. That's true. So I'm I'm like mm-hmm. a sunned, healthy Zuckerberg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are a heavily tanned Zuck. That's what I want, mm-hmm. and I'm coming for all your data. <laughs> Imagine if I knew at all how to get data. <laughs> what would we even do with data? I'm imagining us now on like a data heist, and then like at, we get we get home, we open our big burlap sack of data, yeah. and we put it on the table, and we're like, now what? I mean, it would just be pet. Like, I wouldn't start a website, but I would like you know gather intel on my friends and just hang out with them. Like, do you know what's so interesting that I heard about you? Like, <laughs> that's what. That's the most useful thing that it's for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just just sitting across the table and be like. I know that you, I know you like mukbangs. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Imagine how many of your friends are secretly checking out mukbangs and ASMR, and you know that it's not a healthy interest. Yeah. You know that they're watching these young Korean girls eat live crabs <laughs> in 8D audio. <laughs> that You have to be careful. That's a They that, eat live crabs? Uh, Well, the crabs start out live. The mm-hmm. crabs start out live. Yeah, I guess a munch or two in, they're not so... Oh, oh, no, no, they cook them. I, I, I guess I should. I think some of the some of the food they eat live, but I, uh-huh. I, I, I'm exaggerating a little. I just watched yeah, one yeah. where this beautiful, like you know, this like basically like Korean streamer, like all glam the fuck up, is just holding 
a crab that looks like it's been, been like genetically altered <laughs> and she's just like running her fingers across its shell in like crazy like high def audio mm-hmm. and that it's like 10 minutes before she even fucking eats the thing it feels weird yeah, in my opinion, you shouldn't have a like a psychosexual dynamic with your food. Definitely not. <laughs> Absolutely, especially not. when it's served whole. Right. Like, like you got a chicken cutlet or something. That's an. That doesn't look like a chicken. That's but okay. They, you can you can stroke that. Yeah, but that's if they're fine. bringing out a live chicken and you're like tapping the beak, like, oh, like, <laughs> guess what's going to happen? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucked up. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, it's funny. Shouldn't I, be calling your food your special little man or anything weird like yeah. that. <laughs> my, this, yeah, the crab, the special little man. Yeah, yeah. My soon to be boiled little man. <laughs> well, I mean, you know what's funny? It's like I, I'm uh, at this point now, just out of like a weird, like, uh, I've just got like 30 hours of like mukbang videos like uh-huh. in my YouTube history because I just watch them be like, ugh, how disgusting would it be if I watched these? <laughs> 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 what if I liked this? <laughs> but it's, it's basically the answer the same. is uh, it would be pretty pretty gross. Yeah, it's fucking. I mean, I feel gross even even you know walking taking a walk on that side of the mm-hmm. of the internet. That is a dark exercise that I think all men do sometimes where like you're watching porn you're just like what if I liked this yeah how deep can I go yeah let's let's step into a man's shoes who likes this for sure likes anything could be anything and so and the unfortunate thing is sometimes you have to really come to grips with the fact that you do like it yeah (laughs) you're like well I set out to discover the new world and sure enough (laughs) sure enough here I am yeah here I am California yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah i'm 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 always very grateful like when i go down because there's also sometimes you're you're like on the line where it's like hot for a minute and then you like and then you're like okay i, I got that out of my system yeah like, yeah the worst is like the um the come and then instant just like oh my god right what the hell <laughs> Yeah, that's it's horrible. <laughs> it's been a, it's been a minute since you I come and you're like, I guess I should call my doctor. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I should, guess I should go get an MRI or something. <laughs> Your doctor's like, yeah, man, that's fine. Just to fucking don't tell, don't call me about it. Don't call anybody about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Close your door and enjoy yourself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I'm going to have like unnecessarily like detailed check-ins with my sons about like their porn habits and their sexuality. Oh, cuz you know. Yeah, cuz you- I know. I'm just going to like be like, "Hey boys, uh you watching porn? I'm just here to say that's fine, but stick to like one man, one woman, nothing weird right. going on." And they're gonna- In fact, stick stay on pictures as long as you can. That's right. <laughs> cuz I remember that was definite like a uh, like I remember cuz I would I would look I would as a teen, as a young teen, I would look up pictures of nude women. I would, I would jerk off to that. Mm-hmm. And I remember it, it was like trying a beer for the first time. The first time that I, like, watched a dick going in and out. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, man, I don't know if that's for me. But you know what? Have a couple more sips. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you meant that you loved it immediately. <laughs> no, no. Because <laughs> beer's, you know, the first time you drink it, beer's gross. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. I yeah. see now, yeah. Yeah, much like porn. You know, you're, a, you, you're on a camping trip with your dad or something. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the metaphor doesn't extend like that. <laughs> yeah, dude, you're going to be checking in with your sons. Just like, hey, you know, try to keep it, stick to the light stuff, and they're just going to, like, pull off their full VR helmet, like, eyes bleeding. Like, <laughs> what did you say, Dad? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just, I, I, I feel it's, rather than shaming my sons for their porn habits, I just want to explain to them that, like, look, you want to train yourself so that what makes you come when you masturbate in any way even slightly resembles something sexual that you'll be able to do in your life. Yeah, dude, like like so when I I did the Loud Boys podcast uh-huh. and Dalton was telling me about this porn star like Kinky Joe and so her whole thing is like she's like she gets It's just a guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> no. what's kinky about it, it's just a man. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no E on the end. It's just J- it's just J O. Oh, okay. Um, and so her whole thing is like she's like a gape queen. Uh huh. So and like there, I mean, literally, like I was like, I'm gonna go to her website, like on the and and you know, her asshole is so wide that it's like it's not even sex anymore. It's more like being on the magic school bus and uh-huh. like going into somebody's bloodstream. It's like yeah. this. What are you even getting out of this? It's just the the anal sex equivalent of like when I was putting in those drywall anchors to hang the curtain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're like I can fucking see. Or you're like the, the package said you don't need to drill, but I feel like I need to drill. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, yeah, you're like, like you're you're looking inside this chick's gaped anus, and you're expecting to see like the light from her mouth at the other end. You uh-huh. know what I mean? Yeah, I've never been into that. Thank God. I yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like it becomes like you reach a point where like if you look deep enough into uh-huh. the pussy or the asshole, it just becomes clinical information. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm mean? like? <laughs> yeah, you wanna. You want to stick to coming to things where, like, if your wife did that, you wouldn't push her into a river. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you, know? you wouldn't just Taliban out. <laughs> yeah, I don't ever want my... <laughs> like, obviously, that's an exaggeration, sure. but, like, if I if I, like, if I I was an, a married man, I, I come home and I, mm-hmm. I hang up my pork pie hat and my briefcase and, right. I, and I turn and my wife is gaping with a baseball bat, I think I would just put my coat back on and boy, it would be like the, the Abe Simpson walking into the, <laughs> just yeah, be like, well, right. I guess I need to go find a new town. <laughs> All right. I'm dating again. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Your wife's getting, <laughs> that's even funnier than in this scenario. She's been like practicing in private. Like I know Brandon's going to be so happy when I show him the baseball bat gape. <laughs> Yeah, that, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I see her. No, I think my, you know, because I, I love this one. My mm-hmm. first instinct would be to like put a police blanket over her. Right. Yeah, <laughs> well, a fireproof blanket. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah just I, be like, honey, you must be in shock. I'm calling the EMTs. I am leaving forever. Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> I think you're right, though. I think I think I would go full Muslim. I think I would just walk to the nearest drugstore and be like, hey, do you know which way Mecca is? <laughs> <laughs> I have some I yeah, got yeah. a lot of praying I gotta do. <laughs> Camera's on me at the door and then pans over to my wife putting a bowling ball in her ass and then it pans back and I'm just wearing like a caftan and a fez. <laughs> <laughs> you're not you're not even completely sure what being Muslim is. Yeah, I don't quite know the outfit. <laughs> I just look like a shriner. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's those guys you, are Muslims, right? Yeah, maybe, you, maybe you can't figure out you can't figure out what being Muslim is, so you just join the Lions Club. <laughs> <laughs> do you think that stuff's gonna still be around when we're old men? Like, do you think our generation is gonna be like, well, I guess we all ride our funny little cars in the parade? No, all those buildings are gonna be converted into like ketamine clinics. I'm telling you, there's no, they're not, they're not going to be Shriners. There isn't going to be any like secret order of the such uh-huh. and such. I mean, are Shriners are they like adjacent to Masons? You know what I mean? I think it is something like the Masons. Yeah, because like lion, all like Lions clubs are so baffling because it is, it's like a designated building. I don't know who pays for. I guess the club pays for it but mm-hmm. i always got the impression it was like a government building whenever i would like go there yeah yeah and it's like what if we had a building that was just the cafeteria of a middle school and then also like a back section that's kind of like a youth group prayer room mm-hmm. and like you just come here every week <laughs> or else i don't know like wh- yeah. there's no alcohol maybe you can get some pizza in a styrofoam cup mm-hmm. I, I it's so baffling i want to know what kind of money money is funding those things yeah yeah I'm kind of excited. Uh, I my dad is uh my or my my parents um where they go on vacation. Uh, there's I guess like an Elks Club or something. Elks last, Club, yeah. Yeah, last time uh we had just like a great dad convo where he like called me just like an archetypical phone call with your dad where he like called me asked me some questions about my taxes then he's like yeah I'm at the Elks I gotta you know I'm in the no mask section to go be on a phone call so I gotta. <laughs> you so your dad goes to the Elks Club. I guess he does now, and I'm like. Honestly, sick. I don't know anything about that world, but it feels, it feels like when you turn sixty, that's just what you do. It's a, so it's a VFW for people who were never went to war. Basically, I'm pretty sure that's what it is, and it sounds sick. Well, what the? But they serve alcohol at the VFW, don't I, they? I th- they serve alcohol at uh, they? wherever he is. I forget if it's an Elks Lodge or what. But huh, I didn't know. Yeah. I would love. I just want to know what's going on there. It's not even like it's a yeah. hugely secret society. You know, I'm pretty sure it's just like. Uh, like board games. I'm pretty sure it's just like uh, like middle class white dads getting fucked up. Damn, that's so. What they don't have basements? <laughs> I, don't, I, can't, I guess. I guess you. I guess like well, yeah, you're right. When you age mm-hmm. out of like going to bars, because you don't want to be in a fucking bar with like young hot people when you're yeah, middle aged yeah. dad. I get guy. I guess you're relegated to the Elks Club. Damn. What do you mean relegated, dude? You okay, graduated. You're, you're, yeah, you're good. welcome. Yeah. Let me unhook the red rope for you, sir. <laughs> I think I could be remembering this wrong, but I think I remember my dad telling me about a bar that my grandfather belonged to, that it was open 365 days a year, 
um, no women were allowed inside ever. Whoa. And this was like pre-cell phones. So it was like they just had a landline in there. So it was like it was like a beer commercial, I guess, where like your wife calls and everybody quiets down. They're like, no, he's not here. And you're, <laughs> you're in the back just like shutting. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Honestly, a very dude's rock generation. <laughs> that is so fucking cool. Yeah. Okay, now I'm you're right. Now I'm excited about the Elks Club. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Plus, I'm just imagine the aesthetic. It's all wood paneled. That right. That's dude. That was one of the weird. When we would go to the VFW for the mic, it was like there was something so weird about like it's a bar, uh-huh. but also there's like a shitty like suburban living room. I love the weird like symbology to it. Yeah. Like the table. Right. The table. The little with the table lemon. with like the rose and the lemon. Yeah. yeah. In case what a a a, a MIA prisoner shows up. <laughs> like, what is that for? <laughs> yeah. In case Rambo Two is real. <laughs> well, it's like, yeah, it was just, it was just so weird because, like, you could that. I think there was even one time mm. when, like, I got real comfy in that couch just watching cable, uh-huh. and I like fell asleep thinking I was like in my friend's dad's living room. But no, there was a rowdy bar like a yeah, foot yeah. away from me. It's such a bizarre layout. Mm-hmm. And then the other room is what is the middle school cafeteria. Yeah, yeah. Especially, like, when we would have the mic in the bar part mm-hmm. and just be like, I can't, this is so rude to our servicemen. It's horrible. <laughs> Why would we do it to them? Oh, my God. Why dude. would they allow it? I, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, it's so, it is weird that the VFW allows an open mic there. And they also allow a goth dance night. Yeah. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. They would let goths dance in the other. What do you well, think? I mean, that- for the most part. That place didn't seem that hopping or anything, so... Yeah, maybe a lot of... maybe Yeah, it didn't seem like it was visited by a lot of veterans, honestly. Yeah. But yeah, I would just... I would love to be there one night and see the vets kind of, like, size up the goths. Maybe the first night would be the night to, like, really, like... <laughs> what an interesting culture clash in Burbank, yeah. California. But I bet the goths would win over at least one troop. Oh, for sure, dude. Yeah, I mean, what is more goth than being just crippled by PTSD? <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just hanging out with the guys with like the industrial boots and like the black lipstick and you're like, "Yeah, I've seen death." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like all my friends were killed by Agent Orange and there's just some goth trailer like, "Yo, bro, that's twisted." <laughs> <laughs> Damn, so you're like Jokerified. <laughs> 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 yeah, I bet they love each other. You're mm-hmm. absolutely right. Just putting endless quarters into the mach- into the jukebox to play Morrissey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whoa, dude, that's like messed up, <laughs> dude. Can you? Oh, you know what? Actually, now I want to make a playlist. <laughs> you ever like killed a baby? <laughs> Damn, that's twisted. That's like, uh, like what's that comic? Like Johnny the Homicidal Maniac? That's like you, bro. <laughs> Dude, I'm imagining right now just like a dance playlist that's nothing but Creedence Clearwater and Morrissey, and I'm like, uh, that's a good vibe. Honestly, that that's would, a great vibe. Would be, that would be a pretty sick hang. <sighs> we should go back to the FW. Mm. <laughs> I wonder. If, I bet they don't even have a mask rule there. I bet that they're just like full on, like no way, <laughs> not happening. The, I bet they do because there's one. Um, there's one bar on Magnolia that apparently like is like uh, super like everyone's pissed at because they just. Like from the, it it was some like, it's like a cowboy themed bar or something on Magnolia by like, um, by like Handy Market. I didn't know that. It, I've never been inside. From the outside, it has like, you know, like a metal silhouette of like a guy on a horse or something. Mm -hmm. But I'm pretty sure they just like from day one were just like, yeah, we're not doing any of that. Wow. Yeah. That's the Wild West, dude. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's that's, the Wild West. That's the spirit of the Cimarron. What can I say? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Uh, I mean, there was a, there was like a nerd bar. On Magnolia that I knew of. I've never heard of the... Have, I like these themed bars that Magnolia has. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of weird themed bars in the valley. There's that one that just looks like a barrel. I have not seen that one. Really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's called like... Uh, fuck, like After Hours or something? I don't remember. It's After on, Hours it's on a like, giant barrel? Yeah, yeah, there's a barrel... Uh, it, it just look, the outside building looks like a giant barrel. And every time I drive by, I just like, I think about what would be the funniest. Like if it went out of business and another business had to like move in, it would be the funniest. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, I like sometimes it's like, Oh, the, this dentist office was a pizza hut. And I just imagine like, what if it was like a, like a dress barn or something like a plus size <laughs> women's clothing store. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> you go in there just like, just so you know, the building was like this. We didn't do this on purpose. We're not trying to be mean. 
That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it'd be, yeah, it'd be awesome if all the changing uh, rooms looked like a horse stable. Just like get in there, come on. They like they yeah, prod yeah. you in with a fucking. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, like like in Lancaster County, like how many buildings like used to be horse stables. Uh, it doesn't surprise yeah. me, but like they, but it's crazy that they don't just renovate. I guess it's expensive to renovate a building. Also, you know, some of them are historical. Like there's um. There's like some restaurants where like you're sitting like in a horse stall, basically. Like, really? Yeah, yeah. And they can't. They they're not allowed to change the horse stall. I mean, it. it there's not still like horse shit in there. No, I there hasn't know. been in like a hundred years. That's what I'm saying. It's like it's like okay, we have to like this place is historic. We have to respect it. But like, yeah, you can serve spaghetti in there. You know, <laughs> like, that is absolutely the rules. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Just let it be something else. Take a picture of it. Take a picture yeah. of it and let people know what it was. Or like, I remember like you remember Ryan Meehan? His yeah, I his Ryan. apartment was like it was like very uh it was like one room uh it was like a t- very narrow and long. And it was because that used to be a stable, I think. People are just living in... Oh, I mean... Well, yeah, because they're not going to tear down, like, 1700s brick buildings. We tear down... But how did that... How did those buildings stick it out long? And other shit got teared down that I miss. But yeah, yeah, have yeah. To, you have to live in a horse stable? Yeah, that's the thing, is it's like, if you make the cut, you're good. But it's like, oh, amoeba? No, that's out of here. Gotta go. Yeah. Got, well, yeah, that's what I mean. How did this shit... How did a horse stable make the cut for so long? I guess just not a lot of people were living there. Probably because, like... Uh, the city wasn't like a desirable like place to live for like until like <laughs> twenty years ago. That makes sense. Uh, I just see I don't it. know if that's true, but like no, I, no, I get it. it but I, I, I feel like every, generally, yeah, the, the, all the like revitalization and the like gentrification and stuff is only like fairly recent. More yeah, yeah. recent than the horse stable mm-hmm. because I'd imagine the horse stable probably was around for a minimum. It's got to be like a minimum of hundred years, I think, to be considered historic. If I'm not probably. mistaken. And because I mean La- Lancaster, PA. There's like those you know those blue signs everywhere that say like this is where it, those that's everywhere. Yeah, because there's one. There are some of those even in like the town where I grew up. There are these houses that I guess technically like just cut the hundred year mark, and so they're like little blue signs and the and you're like this fucking piece of shit is mm-hmm. a store. It, I would I would be pissed, dude. If that was my house and I couldn't tear it down, I'd be so pissed. <laughs> I'd be like I, I I would I would I would like fight with. It would be a reverse bulldozer gonna destroy the animal hospital situation. Uh-huh. Where like I would have the bulldozer and the city <laughs> would be trying to stop me. <laughs> <laughs> I would just turn my property into like the movie Up, where it's just like this little house in the middle, and then the rest of my house around it. <laughs> That's a good idea. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah, there's a there's a fucking house in my town where I grew up, uh, where like a a tree grows through it. They like built the house around this tree because I don't I don't know. I think we always assume the tree was significant, but it's like, guys, come on, what are you? That'd doing? be pretty sick to have a have like a courtyard with a tree in it. No, 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 the, no, no. The, the tree goes through the house. So, like, mm-hmm. there's a tree inside the house that comes up through the roof. That's weird. So, eventually, the tree will just damage the house. Of it, yes. And I'm sure there's... Yeah, the same part- way, like, you drive around and, like, just the sidewalk is like that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Trees are kind of That would be... So, say I'm just brushing my teeth and just, like, a branch, like, comes through the drywall. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, how the fuck are trees so powerful, dude? Trees are so all, all dude. the time. I'm like, how the fuck are these things? They don't move. Yeah, they're so but strong. There's yeah, trees rock. Except for when they fuck up my uh, except for when they fuck up the sidewalk, because it's like, bro, are you? How- yeah, it seems like once that happened, the city's just like, look, the tree wins. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking true. <laughs> yeah, damn. Yeah, there's tons of play. Like, there's there's one street in particular in Hollywood that I'm thinking of where like it's like if you have a wheelchair, you cannot go on that street. Absolutely not. And also, like, what's the point? Like, truly, what is the point of preserving the trees on in Hollywood? Like on Hollywood Boulevard, especially. Yeah, yeah. It's like this is cemented trash. Like this <laughs> guy is not helping. Mm. Like you, like literally, the sky is yellow from smog today. I think we can lose this tree. <laughs> if anything, we're being rude to the tree by making it live. By here. forcing it to live, yeah, yeah, so fucked up, dude. Yeah, yeah. We really got to like move those trees out into the woods to like live out their retirement. Yeah, we got to send. It's like a- when you send a police horse out to a farm, right? <laughs> yeah, we need a tree farm. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what we need. Yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't understand the point of that shit at all. It's all, and it's always weird because like they stick out like such a sore thumb, especially on Hollywood Boulevard. Especially, it's just like, what the fuck is this? This is so weird. Now, I, I, it's I, a wretched, horrible town. Uh, I mean, Hollywood Boulevard is. <laughs> I don't know why anybody would go there. 
That's like the f- place you go when you visit here, but it's it, like it's not what LA is at it, all. It's fun to see. It's just fun to see things that you recognize. Yeah, but I would mm-hmm. I would even say like the things you recognize are not on Hollywood Boulevard. Like you recognize like like you recognize really like Silver Lake, Echo Park, like West Hollywood, mm-hmm. but like if yeah, you, people recognize like the the Chinese theater and the. Oh yeah, sure. That you're at the end of it. You're at, like at mm. the tail. Of, you're getting yeah, towards yeah. the end there. But like people show up. I feel I did it. Like people show up. They're like, "Wow, Hollywood! I better go to Hollywood." And it's it's just like you know, dying meth heads mm-hmm. in front of a Boost Mobile yeah. store. If you really wanted to authentically show people Hollywood, we should do a tour where we just show people like different pedophile dens. Yeah, I could do it. <laughs> I have them marked and saved. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for one, we get the guts to really uh. You know, Travis Bickle out. Yeah, but we make it like a, a, a but we do like a Star Tour version of it. We yeah, yeah. Like, we're, like, <laughs> we're like, and this is the home of Steven Spielberg. All right, everybody, keep your seatbelts in. I will be right back. And no, then you, we, you come back just covered in blood. <laughs> I was going to say, even better, uh, we tell everybody, reach under your seat. We have provided loaded guns for everybody on the trip. <laughs> yeah. Anybody who wants to come in with us is welcome to. We're going to give you an up-close and personal tour. <laughs> Dude, how sick, <laughs> yeah, how sick would it be if we got, like, fucking tourists from Ohio to infiltrate the Dome of Silence with us. <laughs> that would be sick. <laughs> We're like, and yeah, because I mean, tourists like they think everything's safe no matter what. Like, how many, how many like Yelp reviews are there of like Yosemite where they're like a moose ate a moose bit me. This sucks. <laughs> yeah, I was bothering the moose. How? Why don't they train the moose better? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's like it's funny that all those star tours are parked on Hollywood Boulevard because it's like, dude, if you're in dirty Hollywood, it's like that's not a great, that's not where like visiting families want to be. This is not Disneyland. Mm-hmm. Don't get on this bus. Yeah, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fuck yeah, Hollywood sucks. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but I, dude, I've since I've been uh, in Echo Park and staying in Silver Lake like a couple weeks ago specifically, like up in the hill, up in like the insanely steep hills of Silver Lake and just like looking on a clear day. It was super clear when we were there. Mm -hmm. And I was just like looking down over like the entirety of the city. And I was like, damn, this is fucking cool as shit. There are these like giant steps in Silver Lake where I was like, I never even knew about this. Damn. But uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm saying. (laughs) We badmouth LA a lot, but I like truly like rediscovered it this past like little vacation with my girlfriend where I was like, this place is cool. Yeah, I think... I don't know. There will definitely be things that I miss about it someday. Mm-hmm. But Yeah, you'll miss your room. You'll miss going downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I've done for yeah. a year. Yeah, you'll miss the garage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll miss having a nice garage for my tools. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah, I remember L.A. They had this really nice... Oh, yeah, the carpeting in L.A. was really nice. You could really, like, sink your toes into it. It was... <laughs> and there was this really good place to eat... Um, it was the fridge in my kitchen. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. There's cool stuff everywhere. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> oh, I'm sleepy this one. I'm trying to wake up. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> uh, let me check the camera a second. Oh, is it on? I'm pretty sure, but I don't see the light anymore. Oh, no. One moment, please. Maybe it filled up. It's okay. I'll keep talking while you do that. Maybe we'll have partial video for this one. We can always like put it back in. Oh, it's is it recording? Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, he's back. Folks, he's back. I guess when you flip the... Yeah, people are going to be enthralled by this. I guess when you flip the viewfinder around, it removes all the, like, icons. Oh, that's weird, because it didn't do that last time. I remember the, the red light last time. No, maybe I changed... Um, I must have changed the settings. Setting. Well, there you yeah. go. Hey, do you want to produce Carrot Out? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who's watching this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is funny that like we have. It'd be to- funny if we flew Lemare out to just fuck, just completely blow it. <laughs> we fly him out twice a week. Yeah, we fly him out twice a week for him to remove, me- <laughs> just like pull memory cards out of the camera while it's recording. Yeah, let's get, dude. Let's get, and let's mm. make him pay for it. <laughs> We're helping him out. You know, <laughs> this is a huge favor to him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I would, dude. I would love to look at Lemare's fat, smiling face <laughs> just on the other side of the table. <laughs> that yeah. would make me so happy. That's a just real... in the darkness behind the lights. Yeah, dude. That's a real secret weapon. Just seeing his just nostrils, just eating snacks and like looking at his phone. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I was watching, dude, his episode on the Lab Boys. It's very funny. The most recent episode that he did mm-hmm. with the Lab Boys, very funny podcast. I was having fun just like pausing it at different points and looking at Lemare's face. <laughs> <laughs> like, like the way he that- is so joyful to look at. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The way that Lemare is idle is so fucking funny. Yeah. He's the man. His head is like a complete sphere. It's beautiful. It's like an orange. Yeah. Well, I, that that was his head is so interesting. I mean, yeah, this yeah. is starting to get racist. Where it's like <laughs> we're, we're talking about. <laughs> I would love to just get some one of those big doll scissors to measure him. <laughs> calipers, yeah, calipers. Let's get some calipers yeah. on Lemare's head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's start labeling all the parts of Lemare's head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We should get calipers just for like, you know, how sometimes like, like someone will have like an antique shovel, like hung up. <laughs> yeah. We should start like a, just a, like a racist, like uh TGI Fridays where everything on the wall has some sort of like darkness to it. <laughs> That's awesome. And like, yeah. they're, they're not labeled. We don't say what they are, but everybody's yeah, yeah. just looking at them is like, I feel like I recognize this. Yeah. It's just, it's just that big collar with the bells on it. <laughs> <laughs> People are just eating their mozzarella sticks. <laughs> like that feels weird. Yeah, is that? Oh, it's not. It's not Christmas time, so I don't think that's like for a reindeer. Yeah, yeah. But you know. Yeah. Hey, you know it's a much better thing to wear <laughs> is <laughs> is uh clothes from under five ten. Right. Yeah. I'm actually. I can show the show the people. Oh wow! Look how nice this yeah. is. I am. Uh, gonna stand? Oh, that chair is groaning. Oh yeah, I'm very fat. <laughs> but yeah, look at these jeans, dude. Twenty six inseam. You can't buy that at JC Penney. No, there's no way. Yeah, under five ten has great clothes for the man who just in the name. If you're under five ten, you're probably used to wearing clothes that don't fit. So go ahead and give yourself a treat. Go to under five ten dot com and pick up some stuff. I have these jeans. These are the Zorba jeans, and they actually uh. Part of the fabric is made out of recycled uh, plastic from the ocean. Oh, hey. Which is pretty sick. That's nice. Mm-hmm. So, you know. They cut that out of a dolphin? I'm sorry. I shouldn't be <laughs> saying that in the end. I mean, that would be a good thing if they did, if they removed it from a dolphin. Right. Well, I mean, the dolphin's dead in that. <laughs> <laughs> in this one. <laughs> We've, these, these rates have been pretty good. This is not a good one. <laughs> I think that it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, uh, but cool. yeah, you know, the the ocean's full of fucking plastic, and the solution is we got to turn it into jeans. Jeans for small men. Jeans for small men. It's the only... Look, NASA agrees, or whatever group is in charge of the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> What's the opposite of NASA? Uh, yeah, is there underwater NASA? Yeah. I don't know, dude. I don't know. <laughs> I think James Cameron's probably in charge of that, Yeah, honestly. James Cameron is in charge of the sea. He's, I, he's president of the sea, as many... <laughs> As many agree. And he's worried about little yeah. guys. Yeah. Are you worried? Is the shirt under 5'10", too, or no? Uh, the shirt is not, but they do have some sick shirts. I got to get them to send me some shirts. They have some nice Henleys. Yeah, the pants they look nice. They have some nice. button-ups. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I wish... I, w- I, I would love Their to- clothes is so nice that, like, if I were to wear their tops, too, it would, it would involve, like, significantly stepping up my style. Oh yeah, yeah, you yeah. have to. You've got to really like commit to it because it's weird to have one nice article of clothes. It would be weird for me to like just have one great outfit. I mean, honestly, that's kind of what I have because they did send me uh, one of their over shirts. You tweeted it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. They they have the over shirts, which are great as like an outer layer for like we're still getting some cold nights out here in LA. Yeah, yeah, but definitely check their stuff out. Uh, you can go to under five ten dot com, sign up for their text alerts, uh, and you'll get a ten dollar coupon. Um. Yeah, honestly, it's great stuff. Uh, a lot of adver- you know, a lot of people like they advertise stuff on podcasts just because, like, yeah, you know, those are the companies that advertise on podcasts. But I actually I approached them because I wear their shit, mm-hmm. and I was like, I could sell the fuck out of your stuff. Nice, because I look like trash and everything else. Right, mm-hmm. and except for these, I'm, I've noticed a significant barn dog glow up ever since you got these special clothes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, the shade is nice, like the the. The tone of the pants, it's very hip right now. What's the a light, bu- nice light wash. Have you been through their uh through their catalog? Like what's the most like unexpected article of clothing that they offer? I'm curious. Um hmm, Do they do think. like special fitted like banana hammocks and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Specifically for the small men's penis. Specifically for the small man's penis. <laughs> yeah, which isn't doesn't necessarily mean a small penis. Sometimes it means a big penis. Sometimes it does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's that's always In fact, surprising. I would say one of the best parts about being a small man is I have a I have an average to slightly below average sized penis, but I'm so <laughs> I'm so below average sized height 
that if you just looked at a full body pic of me, you'd be like, damn, that guy has a bird. Really? Yeah. Nice. Because, like, if you scaled me up, it right. would be like a nine inch dick. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Like, if you scaled me up to be like a, f- a, like a 5'10 man, you... and you scaled my dick up the same proportion, <laughs> it was... is this still part of the I, I don't know if this makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, it's uh, like, look, I'm following you. Okay. So, you, if you took a picture of me. Take a picture of me in front of, like, a ruler or something. Okay. And then in Photoshop, you diagonally scale me up until I'm 5'10". Right. My dick is going to be, like, nine inches. Right. But because I'm 5'2", you know what I'm I saying? It's like what I, you're saying, yeah. I have a nice, like, I totally five inch, it. five and a half good yeah, day. If, if they do that, if they do that, like, rack, like, lengthening therapy torture on you, whatever the fuck mm-hmm. it is, you know that you're at, like, hey, can you guys put one of those clamps on my cock, too? Just yeah, to, yeah. like, just to even it out. Yeah, in fact, I'm going to get smaller. One, so that I can wear more of, their, more of under 5'10's clothes. Really? How small do they go? Um, They go down to a 25 inseam. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. You can see Most of the, like, if you're buying a pair of Levi's at the mall, mm-hmm. lowest you're getting is, like, a 30 inseam. Yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, okay, so, so, yeah, 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 so that's short. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's great. You and, know. uh, yeah, and their, their prices are great. We're, like, uh, it's, like, if you, if you buy a pair of jeans at the mall and you get them hemmed and shit, pay the 10 bucks or whatever, you're paying more than you would to, to get better jeans, better quality jeans. Right. So they do all that for you. Mm-hmm. Guys, buy under 5'10". If you're under 5'10", buy under 5'10". If you're not, figure something out. Yeah. Do something to Get yourself. shrunk. Yeah, get shrunk. Yeah. Invent a shrink ray. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, if you invent a shrink ray, I would lo- please message me because I would love to, I would love to collaborate with you if, if you invent a successful shrink ray. I think there's a, if, we, if I can get into data mining and shrink rays, there's a mm-hmm. lot of fun that I can have. Oh, yeah. With this, with this malleable planet we call Earth. Mm-hmm. But yeah, anyway, check out their stuff. They got joggers, they got hoodies, they got everything. Under 5'10", that's sick. Under 5'10". Nice. Mm-hmm. I'm, t- I, I'm like two inches out of it. I'm so close. I'm mm-hmm. so close to getting into this exclusive club. We'll get you shrunk. I'm trying to get shrunk, especially <laughs> if it makes my bird look a little bigger. That would be nice. Yeah, yeah. Losing two inches and being like, what is that? Like a mm-hmm. fucking, look at that hog. Yeah, yeah. You know how they say like, uh, like shaving adds an inch? Yeah. Being 5'2", adds like three inches See, visually I, I think that like even i think that's why because i've you know through my life i've had women i thought they were lying to me mm-hmm. but they 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 tell me i have a big dick but i think it's just be, it's 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 like how they shot the lord of the rings right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a practical yeah. trick it's like they're looking at my dick but gandalf is sitting like 10 yeah. feet away they built the set right. weird I don't think that any woman that you're dating will ever, while you're currently dating her, will ever tell you that you have a small penis. I think they. Yeah, you're right. That is, that is something that gets yelled at you at the very end. That's right. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I cannot possibly imagine any like a situation where a woman is being who likes you is being honest with you about your penis for anybody. I don't mean mm-hmm. that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, unless you do have a fucking huge cock, but then you know. Have you ever just measured it? Yeah, but not in a long time. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, at this point, who am I? Me- what am I measuring it for? Right, you've got it. Yeah, it's not going to change. Yeah, it's one <laughs> wife secure. <laughs> yeah, there's a margin when you're 14. You measure because you're like a lot of things can change. Yeah, right? I'm not. Mm-hmm. I don't have a beard yet. So yeah. I think it happened when you're. Yeah, when you're 14, you you know you line it up on the doorway to the kitchen and you mark it with a pencil. <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I remember, like, dude, I remember measuring my dick at 14 and then, like, taking into account, like, I, only, I think I was only, like, no, maybe I'd hit my growth spurt. I measured it before my growth spurt, and I was doing the mental math in my head, like, well, by the time I hit my growth spurt, I should have, like, a 10-inch cock, so this is great. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> <laughs> it didn't quite pan out. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that you're just like you're you're just like measured optimism is like, well, I'll have a dick too big to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be great. I'll have a I'll have a, a penis so big women hate it and they hate me. Yeah, everything about me is exceptionally average, but I know that the minute I hit puberty, the Guinness Book of World Records will be knocking down my door <laughs> to take to take like an old timey flash bulb mm-hmm. picture of my cock. Yeah. Man, it's great like uh it it's great being young and having no sexual history and knowing that no woman has ever seen your dick. Nothing can ever be compromised. Right, that's true. Yeah. Like I remember when I first moved to LA, I was stoked cuz I was like nobody in the entire state of California has ever seen my dick. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I miss- This is a land of possibility. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know what's funny? I definitely, that was the first year I was like, it's a fresh start. But unfortunately, yeah, yeah. the women of California have still seen other penises. Yeah. <laughs> they still. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, unfortunately, like, the way that, uh, the way that, like, dating and, and sex works is uh, most of the people who have seen my dick are not in my life in any way. Yeah, and they won't yeah. be again. And they won't be. They're comp- some of them near complete strangers. That's what happens, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like only... Like, I would feel better if, like, my closest boys were the ones who had seen my dick. <laughs> not in a gay way, no, but I, w- sure. I would like if the people I trusted were the ones who oh, know I what my dick Oh, I have seen your cock. Like. I forgot. Not hard. When we were... not no, True, not hard. That's true. Yeah. That would be insane if you got... That would be insane if you were just having, like, a fully hard piss while we were hiking. <laughs> <laughs> I just look up. Yeah, I'm on the top of a mountain, just like forcefully (laughs) pissing through a boner. Just like grunting, like a little bit of blood comes out. You're like, guys, give me one second. You're just hitting the top, the bottom of your chin with your piss. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just talking to Dan, like, yeah, so man, how's your TikToks going? (laughs) While you piss into your own nostrils. (laughs) <laughs> it's so funny pissing up there because it's like people are walking by and yeah. like, and they, you know, like it, it is illegal, but it's like, what are you going to do? It's like by the time you get down off the mountain to tell somebody. Oh, yeah, it's impossible. But yeah. I, I, I'll still be honest. When I saw that'd you- be a great place to flash people. It's just a top of mountain. <laughs> <laughs> that's true you climb all day you're like we made it there's just a guy like <laughs> a guy like mashing like his balls above his dick looking at you and you're like fuck well yeah dude because if you get flashed up there even by the time you get back to the bottom you're like you're you're too tired to be mad you're like yeah, yeah. yeah. you're like I've, that thing happened but. plus you get down there and you're like there's a guy up there and he's, he's he's naked the cop's like I'm not gonna go up there yeah what do you there's no I can't take my fucking car up there I guess I'll try to shoot him from a helicopter <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, it would be awesome if they just shoot him with a missile from an LAPD <laughs> helicopter. <laughs> well, I mean... <laughs> yeah, they, they just blow up the mountaintop. <laughs> I mean, I will, I'll say this. Uh, I was surprised when I saw you peeing on, uh, on Griffith Trail. <laughs> but I guess nobody can well, stop well, you. What was I supposed to do? Piss my pants? No. No, no, but no, yeah. I was, I just, Brendan, it was I made just, sure I was behind a bush somewhat. For sure. Yeah. But you had the, the thing high, is, it's the like, is you had the high ground. Yeah, I had the high ground, <laughs> yeah. so it's like, it's like I'm pissing, the other people on the trail can't see me, but mm-hmm. anyone on a neighboring mountain with, like, a binoculars. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Target acquired. <laughs> I should have sketched your bird yeah. when I saw yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, they zoom in on my dick and then they, they hit like the left bumper to like make sure that it's <laughs> <laughs> they lock on. Yeah, they <laughs> No, they just target it so that then when they go in stealth, they know where all the targets are. Oh, I see. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's like Metal Gear. On, on their mini map, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I just I've never thought to uh I just you know what it is? It it I realized when I saw you pissing on the on the trail up in like the you know the mountain, I was like, oh, the world. I, there's more freedom than I thought in this world. It was just something I had never mm-hmm. considered, and it's rare that I learned that lesson from you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> I am a man continually in prison. Absolutely, self imprisoned. I would say some would say of your own doing. Yeah, <laughs> it's just you many. Just, <laughs> absolutely, everyone would say that. <laughs> you're, just, you're just hanging up a sign over your room that says the Hotel California. <laughs> <You're> just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. But uh, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna try the next time I hike. I'm gonna try pissing. But I'll be watch me get tackled immediately. Like yeah. watch like cops just come out. A guy with boulders. like an earpiece <laughs> <laughs> comes out in a full suit, and tackles you off the mountain. Yeah, goddamn. I uh, pissing in public is something that I still like. I've I've had sex in public. I've had like disgusting sex in public. When I piss in, <laughs> why? I, I mean, I shouldn't. It wasn't like we went out to do it. it I've, I've talked. To, it was just I. It, when I say public, we were outdoors. It's not uh-huh. like it's not like we were like you know trying to get a, a crowd around. <laughs> <laughs> but I've had sex outdoors. Uh huh. You weren't dogging, as the Brits say. Well, is that what like trying to get? I think that I remember. I think dogging is like uh like weird, like like swingers in Britain. Their whole thing is like, what if we fucked in a park and everyone could see a park like during the day or something? Ugh. No, it's got to be nighttime. What are you doing? <laughs> British people, they can't cook and they have funny ideas about sex. I also, you know what's funny? I don't sexualize the Brits at all. 
like if a woman has a this is gonna sound horrible mm. but if a woman has a british accent i'm like not interested <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> i don't even imagine her like what that she even has like a naked state you know, she goes to bed fully clothed. That's very interesting. <laughs> I don't know how to explain. I, I would love to know why, but we never will. I just don't sexualize the. I don't sexualize British people. I don't know why. <laughs> They're like children to me. I'm like, you can't go there. <laughs> I do not know why. Even my British icons, like Gordon Ramsay, I'm sure uh-huh. the dude is crushing pussy. I think he was even like notably fucking like there was like an affair. But I can't imagine that guy fucking. It seems too silly. Yeah, yeah. He cooks and I would love Gordon Ramsay to like. Like, he, he, like, eats the pussy and then spits it out like he's on <laughs> Kitchen Nightmares or something. <laughs> it's bloody raw. It's bloody, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he pulls the tampon out of the pussy. like, oh, dear. <laughs> oh, how much is in there? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Now, anyway, what I was saying is when I, when I piss outside to this day, mm-hmm. I have, I mean, it takes a lot to get me kind of i just don't i don't know i feel that's the one i feel the most on edge like uh-huh. like it could all come tumbling down is me getting caught pissing outside mm-hmm. i don't know i don't know why it is <laughs> if i would if i you know what if i would even dare to go to therapy once i'm sure i, mean, I would probably yeah, yeah. lead with that i'd be like hey <laughs> i'd be like there's a lot of stuff that we're uh-huh. gonna get through but like if i could just introduce a topic <laughs> i have found that when you just flat out ask a therapist about like something specific they hate it. They're just like, well, I don't know. Um, oh, is it yeah. what? They're supposed to like turn it back on you? Yeah. I Therapy's fake. I, you know. <laughs> well, I think someone in our Discord said that. Where they were, they were like, uh, you're probably going to like bad therapists because like, and like a good therapist would call it like, I forget what they said. Like, mm. uh, but anyway, they were like, yeah, a lot of therapy's bad. Like therapy is very good, but you're probably not getting good therapy. Well, the whole thing with therapy. I mean, I know I certainly am not. Yo, you're not? I yeah. thought you I thought you liked this uh therapist. Initially like the new one. It's okay. It's okay. Um I don't know. I mean the, the I got really mad cuz uh I I missed an appointment and she charged me $90, which I guess that's on me. You know, like I agreed to that, but it's like I've had therapists before and they give you one. They give you like one right. like it's it's okay and what really pissed me off is, is I was like how much do I owe you for the cancellation and she sent back $90 with a smiley face emoji and I just <laughs> I <laughs> I like I, I Venmoed her and then I just like turned my phone over and didn't look at it again for like a day I was well, just like so furious well so it's happened before you've missed therapy appointments before like with other therapists yeah yeah Brandon it sounds like there's a lesson that's trying to be taught here don't you think I miss it. Yeah. Well, look, it's, it's, this is all, it's all yeah. meta part of the therapy, dude. Yeah. I'm not a very organized man. That's okay. But maybe now you, you look, you've incurred a financial, uh, it's more as like the, the problem is just now that like, uh, it's like nowadays I have so few things to do that it, most days it doesn't even occur to me that maybe I have something going on that day. Oh, you should like schedule things for yourself. You should like put it in your calendar, like on your phone. <laughs> yeah, you're, like, you're like, look, dude, you can't ask me to do that kind of shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what do you think this is? <laughs> you're right. I'm sorry. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I am I think I'm probably the, the busiest I've ever been in my life, and uh, it's it's nice. I'm also starting to crash a little bit. Like, working nights and then working immediately again in the morning sucks. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I asked for that. <laughs> oh, the classic clopin. Yeah. As, as uh, waiters call it. Oh, yeah. The, God, I fucking yeah. forgot about the clopin. Mm-hmm. There's nothing worse than, like, fucking stacking ketchup in the fucking... I don't work at a restaurant anymore, uh-huh. but I would remember at the at the shitball steakhouse I worked at. Because it's it, we were supposed to be like a... Did fan, you just say shitball steakhouse? The shitball steakhouse that I worked at. Why? Oh, I, I thought that was the name of the place. I was yeah, very welcome confused. To, welcome to shitballs. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, like, is that, like, an Italian word or something? <laughs> Yeah, we do shitball style here. Yeah. No. It's everyone's least favorite type of barbecue. <laughs> it's where I shit all over my balls. <laughs> yeah, the chef. The yeah. Chef. It's it's the same as Texas, but the chef has shit all over his balls. It doesn't affect the food at all. It's just like a, it, it, it's, a, it's an ambience thing. Yeah. <laughs> Knowing that your food is being cooked by a man with shitty balls. Yeah. 
Yeah. His hands are clean. Completely. We, oh yeah. my God, we would never contaminate the food. But yeah. we want you to know yeah. that you're getting the authentic shitball experience when you eat. <laughs> Look at him. He's miserable. <laughs> we make him do it. <laughs> it's not even his shit. That's the worst part. Do you know what's fucking funny? Uh, thinking about Herman the chef at the place where I used to work. I think he's dead now, so I think it's okay to say his name. <laughs> um <laughs> I'm pretty sure that we're, this bit that we're riffing, I'm pretty sure, was probably true 60% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> that guy stunk. Uh-huh. Literally, he smelled bad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the clopin is terrible. Yeah, there we is something like kind of romantic about that world, though, where you're like, ooh, it's me and a bunch of degenerate alcoholics, and we're all doing a task for some reason together. Dude, I couldn't, like, it was romantic, it's funny because you want to know why? Because like that, a lot of my life is me hanging out with degenerate alcoholics mm-hmm. and like cramped spaces. And nobody knows why we're anxious. And we've yeah, just, yeah. You know, and it, like we don't know why we've signed. Like we all just took acid together, so we've essentially signed up for like a fourteen-hour shift together. But <laughs> but for some reason, yeah, I hate clocking in to dribble <laughs> acid. And you know, when I wasn't making any money, uh-huh. there was something less stressful about like. But like the minute like I, I had to be in that environment, those people, and I was getting paid well, like two dollars an hour plus tips Uh so much worse i was like i gotta get out of here so i can hang out with my other junkie friends (laughs) (laughs) yeah it was the worst ever dude Mm. (laughs) that's just where i'm at right now outside i'm I'm doing the clopin again it's not in a restaurant environment but it's still Mm -hmm. just like i went i got i get home from work at midnight and then gotta wake up at fucking nine o'clock to go back oh my god come on yeah terrible do people do escape rooms that early we yes People are, as far as I can tell, people seem to always be doing escape rooms. <laughs> they, they don't get sick. I mean, these people are, we, I, I can't get into the minutia of my job, uh-huh. but we had a group of people last night. I mean, these were sick people. These were, if I had my way, these people would not be, uh, they, they, we, they wouldn't be part of the census uh, next year. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> these, these are people who need to be stopped. Yeah. These people's social security number would get reused. Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly right. <laughs> they're not they're not using their money wisely. I can prove it by mm-hmm. the fact that they've been here four times this month. One of these fucking people uh-huh. keeps bringing he's done all the rooms. He keeps bringing dates back to do the rooms to impress them. And then he acts like he's he like pays us he like tips us extra which I'm cool with, but he's like don't let her know that I've been here before. And then he acts like he's figuring it out with her. Oh my god. It's psychotic, dude. This guy's not using That's like the- a three hundred dollar date more more because they do Good more than God. one room he does three of the fucking rooms uh-huh. so it's a lot so it's like at that point just show her your money just sh- <laughs> exactly just show her your money yeah and um so these people are not spending their money wisely i think that it should be their fund should be transferred to me mm-hmm. because i will put it to better use i'll donate some of it a lot of it's going to be spent on uh getting a playstation 5 off of ebay uh-huh but th- it's just, I mean, the excess of escape rooms is disgusting. I can't stand it. Yeah, I really thought it would have the business would have burned out by now. No, people love it. I don't know what they love about it. It's, man, I hope that uh, my bosses who know that I have a podcast <laughs> do not find, it would be so easy for them to find this. <laughs> it truly okay. would. Yeah. They follow me on Instagram. I was like, yeah, you guys can follow me. I was like, that's great. Yeah, listen to my podcast where I trash talk you guys. <laughs> but whatever. Fun. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm a new man. I'm feeling free. I'm going to piss on the mountain. Mm-hmm. Nobody can get me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, a lot of it say? is celebs coming to bother you at this job, right? Yeah, I can't. I'm not allowed to talk about them. Yeah, yeah. I, no. genu- I genuinely would get in trouble if I did that. I didn't mean like specific people. I just meant like, does that make it even worse? Uh, yeah, nobody wants to be talked down to by these fucking, like, literally, like, I mean, there, you know, there, there, there's a, there's a community up in the Hollywood Hills called Mount Olympus. I was talking about in the group chat, I was talking about like one of these Mm -hmm. women comes in, I'll put it this way. One of these women comes in and it literally, like, she has the air of like, you know, one of the gods or the Titans coming off of Mount Olympus. She's just like, kind of like bemused about like, you know, working class people. And, and, and <laughs> oh, look at him. He's doing his little job. Yeah, yeah. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, without disclosing who it is, I'll just say that she brings her many, many adopted children into the room. <laughs> <laughs> Probably enough that you could take one. You could snatch one. Easily. There's yeah. no way she keeps track of all them, dude. Uh-huh. Oh, I'm telling you what, man. If if Mia Farrow... Aren't there supposed to be like... Wasn't that part of the Mia Farrow thing? Aren't there supposed to be like laws that you can't adopt that many children? Um, I mean, I don't think 
Maybe they're posts I, I when I, she did that. I think I remember hearing that that like uh, like she lobbied to like get those laws changed to that, get more adopted children. Yeah, yeah, dude. If Mia, Fa- I'm telling you, if Mia Farrow ever came into my escape room, I c- I could totally like she. Well, f- first of all, we'll just say this: she's not escaping. No, <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> You just, you just do a Woody impression over the intercom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, it would be a horrible shame if your locks didn't come off. <laughs> <laughs> that would be absolutely fucking psychotic. Yeah, yeah. Was it you who said the, the picture that she, like, photoshopped her dead daughter out of that photo of her and, like, Chelsea Clinton? I didn't send that, but I have seen it. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen That is wild. Well, the, I mean, the, the the one that everyone talks about is she was wishing one of one of her adopted daughters, who's black, a happy birthday. Uh-huh. And the she instead of like posting a picture, she like Google image searched Mia Farrow's black daughter and yeah. kept it in the screenshot when she posted the tweet. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Mia Farrow's black daughter. That rocks. Mm-hmm. That's so funny. Yeah. Honestly, maybe Woody. Here's a new like galaxy brand theory. Mm-hmm. I think Woody Allen might just be like the most ingenious pedophile of all time where he's like, all right, I'm going to be a pedophile and I'm going to marry the craziest woman who's ever lived. <laughs> so no one will believe her. Damn. <laughs> That's a smoke screen. Uh-huh. That's what you have to do, dude. It's like, you think I would marry my adopted daughter? <laughs> <laughs> Look at this bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's also, oh, it's, you know what's funny? It's also a good- I know it wasn't really his, like, his, his daughter or right. whatever, but like, it's, it's funnier to say. Look, everybody's decided it was his daughter. Look, I'm not trying to cast <laughs> judgment on Soon Yi's looks, but it is also an incredibly galaxy brain move to like- the the child that you groom isn't even hot. Yeah, yeah. You just be like, no, I'm telling you, it's about love. Look at her. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's it's Woody Allen is truly a conflicted thing for me because like on one po- on one hand I love not believing women, but on the other sure. I love just projecting that anyone in Hollywood is a pedophile. I mean, look, man, I will tell you, projecting is the wrong word. That makes it sound like I'm a pedophile. <laughs> 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 you know, like we love we love just saying that like and, uh, throwing stuff out. We love just being like Tom Hanks. Pedophile. Pedophile. He is. Based off what? He pees in his movies. He pees in his movies. So explain that. Yeah. Nobody can. Mm-hmm. Um, and he had a tweet with Barry Sobel once. Yeah, not good. Mm-hmm. You're saying this like this is you're saying this like we should be dismissing it. No, no. Yeah, I'm <laughs> honestly reselling myself. Now. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Barry Sobel's a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, uh, the thing after I watched Alan V. Farrow, like it took me one episode to be like, they both raped the kids. <laughs> 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 Alan V. Farrow makes it sound like it's Ford V. Ferrari right. or something. Like it's, Batman V. Superman. Yeah. Like. <laughs> like it's just like an action packed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah. Now, dude, imagine. It's I, the Martha moment, but it's like, I'm a pedophile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like the, the, like the whole Woody Allen thing, it's really, it's, it's, it's a huge uh, cross street of, do I go dudes rock? Do I do uh, pedo gate? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, which one of my values can I hold to in this time? Woody Allen's a tough one, man. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, so all so I re- what I really have to do is be like he, uh, yeah, he did it, but it it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's not my real take. It's the only way that I can reconcile those. Of boys. course, yeah. He loves look. He loves Sun Yi. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite, there's this Martin Short character. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why it's so funny. Uh, Jiminy Glick is, vi- if you guys have never watched old clips of Jiminy Glick, I swear to God, Jiminy Glick is so fucking funny. And Jiminy, there's a Jiminy Glick movie called Jiminy Glick in La La Wood. That's uh-huh. like, and it's, it's great. It's, 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 it's a comedy like Bergruber where it's like the reviews were bad, but that movie uh-huh. makes me laugh so fucking hard. Mm-hmm. And he does these interviews and his character like with these, and I forget who he's talking to, but Woody Allen comes up and he just goes, "Have you seen Soon Yi? How does Soon Yi look?" And just like, the, <laughs> like, just like the, the way he's almost like salivating over Soon. It's like such an insanely taboo thing to say. <laughs> I don't know why it's so funny. Was Soon Yi there? Did you see Soon Yi? Yeah. <laughs> to openly yeah, it joke is, about it, the groomed <laughs> child bride of Woody Allen. <laughs> that is a funny concept of America just unanimously being horny for Sunni. <laughs> 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 
Yes, dude. Yeah, like they're like Brangelina or something. <laughs> <laughs> and ever since then, like just hearing the name Soon Yi really makes me laugh. God, I miss that genre of movie. Just like unhinged sketch comedy actor. Yeah. Just, just giving it his all to a... Uh, Probably racist character. So, like, dude, and such a limited. The my favorite thing about that movie is like um, Martin Short plays like. There's two leads in that movie. Uh-huh. He plays Jiminy Glick, and he also everybody else is played by themselves. But he plays Jiminy Glick, and he also plays David Lynch. And for the first, <laughs> for the first, honestly, the first two times I watched the movie when I was younger, I actually thought that it was David Lynch because uh-huh. he's the other main character in the movie. <laughs> it's, I gotta see this movie. It's very fun. There's so many like fucking throwaway lines where uh, like uh, he's talking to David Lynch and David Lynch is like, anyway, I have to go. I have a haircut at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this movie's so fucking funny. That's a great line. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, watch Jiminy Glick and Lala Wood. It's 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 great. It's so awesome. <laughs> yeah. Damn. I hate why why does everyone hate movies like that now? I don't was know. Was it it was Robbie who sent us that like some streaming service that Austin Powers is on now. It has a it has a warning before it, like it's Song of the South or something. Really? Yeah. Wait, it wait. says like the following movie contains outdated attitudes. It's like <laughs> It's a it's a movie That's about the point. Yeah, it's a movie about time travel culture clash. <laughs> like, it, like in the first Austin Powers movie, Austin Powers is horny, and people are like, "Hey, man, cut that out." Yeah, like, <laughs> that's the point of the. That's it's so insane. We don't have sex in 1998. <laughs> are you kidding? It's so funny. You know, Wowo's. Th- I've mentioned this before. Uh-huh. Wowo's the only three movies that he owns. Uh-huh. <laughs> I think no, there might be four. I think he added John Wick to it. Uh huh. But like the only. He owns a DVD copy of John Wick. He uh-huh. owns One Floor of the Cuckoo's Nest and Austin Powers in Gold Member. Uh-huh. He loves Austin Powers in Gold Member. Only Gold Member? <laughs> that is the only one of the entire. It might be the only one that he's seen, honestly. <laughs> when you go to his house. I could see Wowo being like um, like Roger Ebert style. I could see him being one of those like old white men who's like lecherously horny for specifically black women. Uh, yeah, I think that's true. I don't know. I can't, I mean, he would never cop to such a thing, so I don't want to slander Wowo. But I will tell you that he he is a, um, infamously, at least amongst our own family, infamously horny man. (laughs) <laughs> like my my grandfather like every time I see him imagine being so horny you're gr- it's a topic of conversation with your grandchildren <laughs> he like downloaded Instagram just so he could show me pictures of like women that he goes to the gym with <laughs> oh it's not it's not Instagram models it's just he just finds the profiles of women at his gym people that he knows is he taking the pictures? No, no, no. He's on their profile. Okay. So I guess he has an Instagram that he doesn't have any photos uploaded to, but he has, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know. It's just a... God bless him. <laughs> just a completely blank profile with with no avatar. Just <laughs> Sam Old. Yeah. He's not even hiding his identity. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's the man. I, um, I'm telling you, dude, one day, you're going to regret. One day he's going to be gone, and you're going to wish that you had an episode of this podcast to remember him by. No. <laughs> I can tell you no, and I, and I can tell you something else. You don't want that. <laughs> I promise you. You don't, you don't want, this is a no edits podcast. You, you would be up all night editing, Brandon. <laughs> We would have to record for three hours. Well, no, we just put we'd put a warning in front of it, like it's Austin Powers, <laughs> like it's an old. Bu- yeah, we should honestly we should start doing that every week. Just be like the following podcast contains outdated stereotypes, <laughs> um, <laughs> offensive language. We recorded this podcast on Monday. By the time it was released on Friday, we realized that you know times are different. Things yeah, have yeah. Changed. It needs to open with like you and me, like sitting in like director's stools, be like, "Hi, I'm Brendan Crick," and I just want to <laughs> explain that you know when we recorded this podcast. It was a different time. Right. And, uh, you know, for the sake of historical accuracy, we want to preserve um, what it was because to, to scrub it out would be like saying that those never those things never existed on Monday in the first place. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then it fades out. The intro plays and I'm in a kimono with buck teeth just like <laughs> looking into the camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be funny if, like, that's how we recorded this. Like, it has nothing to do with the the episode. Mm-hmm. Which yeah, every- we just- <laughs> we, everybody's, like, been listening to this podcast for, like, years. They're like, all right, yeah, sick. They're finally doing video, and we're just in full gay show makeup. Yep. They're like, oh. 
and, and, and we're like, we've been doing this the whole time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's like an hour prep before we would record just audio. <laughs> oh, dude, I would love to get memoirs of a gay shit out mm-hmm. just for the show. <laughs> you guys are going to like that. Yeah. Just so you know, all the audio episodes are recorded in dresses. Yeah, we have to. Beautiful dresses. Beautiful flowery dresses. <laughs> dresses I wish that, you know, the kind of dress that I'd like to see my uh, my girlfriend get married to me in. Mm-hmm. I'm breaking them in. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny if, like, like, you propose to a woman, you reveal you've already purchased the dress. <laughs> She's like, you own a wedding dress? It's like, yeah, I wear it. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. What? What, you're not all in on this? <laughs> you don't love me for me? Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, there's something so... Imagine if you're... The, I think that, like, the darkest fetish that I can imagine yeah. is a guy wanting to get fucked, or even fuck. You don't have to be getting pegged. But a guy wanting to fuck in a wedding dress? Oh, my God. Oh. Go to jail. <laughs> yeah, that that doesn't sit right with me. <laughs> that I'm sorry the- about the coughing. I don't have COVID. I was actually, I was throwing up so much last night that like my throat is raw. What are you throwing up about? Uh, I don't know. I just, uh, All right. I ate a bunch of like bean dip. Okay. That, yeah. that case, I think mystery solved. <laughs> yeah. I think case closed on that one. Mm, yeah. My girlfriend, she has this, this meal that, um, you know, she makes every now and then. Cause I guess like her and her mom would eat it growing up. Um, I don't remember what they called it, but uh, it's like um, it's 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 good. Uh, but it's like cre- it's like a cream cheese chili like cheese blend, and you eat it with chips. It's a dip, but you know when she makes it, I'm a pig, so I just eat it as like my dinner. So it's cream cheese and cheese yeah. and beans. And I I I, st- I mean I was I just named the dish beans and creams, which she hates. <laughs> Apparently, her family's upset that it's called that. I hate it too. Yeah, yeah. yeah everybody, I think everybody. Yeah, I was eating my beans and creams, and then just I, I was like, "Babe, I love you. I need to go home now." <laughs> you had to go home to vomit. How much is it? Oh, Brandon. Well, I had to go home to like just lay in the dark, like feverishly thrashing for a while, oh, and then dude. I woke up and I vomited. That would be how when I would I would order a extra large pizza from Pizza Hut by myself on Friday nights, like mm-hmm. when my parents were at the football game at yeah, the school. Yeah. So I'd be like, I can, I can eat a whole pizza. It's, this was truly like the precursor mm-hmm. to like overdosing on drugs. Yeah, yeah. I've talked about this before where like I would be, I would eat a whole pizza. I would feel so sick and so like trapped in my body. Like I just couldn't escape the nausea. And then I would go lay on the couch downstairs and watch TV. And like every time a Pizza Hut commercial would come on, I would just be like, oh, <laughs> just like hiding in the pillow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just a precursor to acid. Just complete, like, absolutely. Like, well, I have to do all of it <laughs> yeah, yeah. so that it challenges me. <laughs> I can't just have a nice time. Well, I just do, the problem is I'm a strict I'm a strict member of the clean plate club. Mm. So if there's a hundred strips of acid on my plate, that thing's gonna be clean. All right, yeah. I'm a polite boy. Yeah, Brendan, I I unfor- I have to go to work. Okay, <laughs> in thirty minutes I gotta go. All right, well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, subscribe to our Patreon. Um, we still have T-shirts for sale on um, Hard Times on the Hard Times dot net uh, shop. And um, if even if you're listening to this on audio, why don't you go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel? It'd be a big help. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, we're excited to have this up and running. Uh, the other thing is, it's I've I've confirmed it is happening. There's going to be a poster soon. Coward Hour is going to be doing a live show at the Auto Bar in Baltimore on July 10th. Doors are going to be at six. Mm-hmm. The podcast is going to go from like six thirty to seven, and then there's going to be a stand up show. Yeah, yeah, and but, it's it's outdoors, right? It's on a patio. It's outdoors on a patio, so there's limited seating. I think they can get about forty to fifty people there. You'll be seated at the tabletops. Mm-hmm. There will be a ticket link that goes live, but we're going to have Lemare and Robbie as the guests on the podcast, mm-hmm. and then they, we're going to be doing a little stand-up. So if you want to see Lemare's beautiful head. His incredible head, dude. Yeah, if in you person. Want, if you bring your own calipers, we'll let you do whatever you want. Um, <laughs> and then and there will be a stand-up show after where we're all going to do some time. So uh, mm-hmm. I know that like we wish that it, we wish there could be like a little bit, a slightly bigger venue, but like with... COVID restrictions still in place. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a pretty cool outdoor show. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be fun as hell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like I said, there will be a poster for that up soon. So, uh, yeah. Please come out to that, guys. Buy the shirts. Sick. All right. See ya. All right.
Knock, knock, open up, it's me, the crazy, shady, faded fucker, so rock the G. So see a lady, G. make a baby, lead her on in peace. Only time I give a fuck is for, for my, my own, own release. release. That's why I own these streets. Straight up, portfolio, showing growth, fuck a pay cut. cut. Yeah, you know I stay slut. Catch me in the spot, lubing up for the self suck. Oh, fuck, I busted already. I'm coming, bucket so heavy. Fuck my dream so of cream heavy. coming steady. Now my mouth open, I'm ready. I'm talking solo, heavy petting on a Friday, Friday night. night. That's Talking bashing the bishop more like that tuggest delight. I'm Nantucket taking all the time delight. I need to do it just right. Got my candles in the fishnets cause it's on tonight. Oh, that's right, it's time to fillet. No need to debate me. I suck until I go ooh wee and spray my white pee pee. I got that ski ski ski. Uh.